very good evening to all of us. I want to thank uh, those of you who have managed to join on time and even those who uh, are still planning to join us. Uh, this week uh, has been and is still Adventist Health Ministries Week. And uh, for this particular week, we are considering a theme created and called to be the temple of the Holy Spirit. And uh, we are deriving this from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 16 all the way to 17. Now let's have a word of prayer as we invite uh, Dr. Lee to speak to us. Let's pray. Eternal Father in heaven, we just want to thank you once again tonight for the gift of life. We want to thank you for the opportunity that you give us to learn every other time so that we don't perish because of lack of knowledge. Thank you for the opportunity that we have once again of listening, uh, of course, through uh, the ministry of uh, Dr. Tari and uh, Brother Moses as he takes us through this uh, particular uh, uh, session. I pray that you'll give us a good listening and divine Father above all, you will uh, be able to enable us to make a great step as far as our health is concerned. Therefore, start with us and end with us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So Amen. Um, allow me to invite uh, Tari to take us through the presentation. He will take us through this presentation for around 30 minutes, then we will have a session of question and answer. I've seen a very uh, good friend of mine here, uh, Dominic Vasco. Thank you so much, Dr. Tari, for joining. A very serious man from Kabarak University, uh, a very important person. Uh, so we are blessed to have you. And all of us, thank you so much. Dr. Tari, without much ado, Mr. Mokaya, Dr. Tari, please welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much for the kind introduction, uh, Willis. Let me try and share my... Um, I hope it's visible. Um, is it visible? Am I clear, Willis? Yes, on my end, it is visible, and yes, you are clear. Thank you very much. Uh, First of all, I want to appreciate your invitation for this important uh, meeting. Um, one disclaimer though, uh, my name is uh, uh, list with a, a big title doctor. My name is Mr. at the moment, uh, though I'm working towards uh, changing the Mr. to doctor. I'm a PhD researcher in a, a university in Belgium called KU Leuven and uh, uh, Jomo Kenyatta University, collaborating with Jomo Kenyatta University. Um, then another important thing that I also want to state is that uh, the, our, our, our session today does not exclude uh, any other guidance that anybody has been given by healthcare providers. So uh, that is an important thing for us to, to note as we start. My experience is, is broad as uh, uh, Willis has mentioned. Uh, uh, and my specific interest now is to 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 uh, looking at how to use uh, food literacy in order to prevent and control non-communicable diseases. And specifically, my interest is in type two diabetes. So I will proceed with my uh, session. And I, in in case anybody has a question, I think the best thing to do is to hold the questions so that once the presentation is done, then I can be able to answer the questions uh, in totality. Now, I start with this, uh, 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 let me just remove something here. I start with this part, uh, which is an important uh, message from, uh, 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 from Ellen G. White. Therefore, it is of the highest importance that men and women be instructed in the service of human life and best means of preserving and acquiring health. So health is actually upon us to decide, just like uh, God gave us the decisions, uh, I mean, gave us the ability to make choices in the Garden of Eden. Further, in the book of Genesis, uh, uh, God said this, behold, I've given you even plant yielding seeds that, on the uh, that is on the face of the earth, uh, and every tree with seeds in its fruits, you shall have them for food. So clearly, God saw the value of fruits and plants in, in, in our health right from the beginning. 
Again, in the book of Proverbs, the Bible says this, be not among drunkards or among gluttonous eaters of meat, for the drunkard and the glutton will come to poverty and slumber will clothe them with rags. This is from the Bible. So uh, today's session is, it has three uh, objectives. One is to look at the statistics, to uh, look at the dietary practices, practical uh, uh, actions that you can take to prevent and reduce non-communicable diseases, and three is to demystify some myths that are associated with health. Firstly, I think it's important for us to note that uh, nutrition and physical activity alone uh, cannot uh, be the magic bullet to prevent non-communicable diseases. There are many other factors within the environment and others uh, are within our genetics. So what we can do with diet is basically to try and prevent the onset of non-communicable diseases. And at times it can actually prevent non-communicable diseases if well taken care of. So the first thing we need to look at is about obesity. And as I talk about obesity, I don't want to sound, um, uh, uh, I don't want to sound unfair. Um, one thing is that uh, some aspects about obesity are not clearly understood. But uh, current statistics show that 70% of overweight and obese people are living in low and middle income countries. This is where we are in Kenya. 79% of the children have obesity. Uh, children between five, uh, I mean under five, um, children between five and 19 years, they 73% obesity. And then uh, we also have uh, adults where we have about 71% of, of, of people that are obese. This, these numbers are a bit alarming, uh, but I'm going to say something about obesity later on as, as we progress. So um, then globally, nearly one out of two adults uh, uh, have obesity. One out of five children have obesity uh, and, and overweight. The, that, that is statistics from uh, 2016. That shows us that the magnitude of obesity in the world is big. Now, let me go down specifically to diabetes. And statistics uh, from the International Diabetes uh, Federation show that uh, in 2019, nearly half a million of Kenyans had diabetes. It is projected that uh, in 2030, the number will almost double. And in 2045, the number might triple. Now, one important uh, indicator to diabetes is impaired glucose tolerance. Uh, which is basically a, a, a pre-diabetes state. In 2019, we had about 2.9 million people who had diabetes. And by 2045, we are seeing nearly a seventh of the Kenyan population getting diabetes, assuming that the numbers of, of the Kenyan population will remain uh, uh, the same. This tells us something that uh, uh, diabetes is a pandemic and we need to take control and take charge uh, by taking personal responsibility about uh, preventing and controlling the risks that increase uh, chances of getting diabetes. So what are the medical complications associated with obesity? They cut across all body systems, uh, starting from, from, from the brain, uh, uh, hypertension, uh, intracranial hypertension, stroke and cataracts in the eyes, uh, coming to the heart, uh, coronary heart diseases, uh, basically looking at diabetes, dyslipidemia, hypertension, uh, pancreatitis, we have uh, cancer risks, we have uh, 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 venous uh, problems, um, uh, we also have osteoarthritis, skin conditions, gout, uh, gynecological abnormalities, and uh, uh, gallbladder disease, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, and, and all those are some of the complications that might be associated with obesity. But let me say something about obesity here before we proceed. At times, it's difficult to manage obesity. But the important thing that people need to know is that the moment you do anything associated with keeping yourself safe, the diet that I'm going to talk about, the physical activity that I'm going to talk about, the little changes that we make may not be read on the scale that you stand on to take your weight. So the simple, small steps, taking a walk instead of taking a motorbike, uh, uh, choosing the right diet that I'm going to talk about here, are important aspects that actually improve your cardiopulmonary function that 
and, and cardiovascular uh, fitness in, an, in a way that might uh, surprise you. So much as you stand on the scale and you, your BMI body mass index uh, or your weight is, is a bit high, it may not necessarily mean that you're headed for trouble. What you do about your weight is an important thing. So let's not uh, uh, sacrifice or, or crucify ourselves uh, if someone is overweight. So the guidance on body fatness is this, that we be as lean as possible within the normal range of body weight. And body weight, I know uh, many of us might be knowing when you're talking about body mass index, which is an indicator that is used to determine uh, body fatness um, uh, by uh, taking your weight, then dividing it by the square of your height in meters. The simple way that I advise people to do is take your weight. You can take your phone now, take your weight. Uh, you know your height, if it's uh, 1.7 meters, then divide again by 1.7. So take your weight, divide by the height, and then divide again by the height in meters. So the personal recommendations is essentially through childhood into adulthood, uh, try as much as possible to have a BMI range of, 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 uh, uh, of a normal BMI range by the age of 21. One thing about body weight is that it's, it's, it's easier to gain weight, but it's quite an enormous task for you to lose the weight. So the better uh, for us to try and reduce the weight by uh, what we do and what we eat. Then of course, in, in, avoid uh, weight gains as much as possible. And weight gains come because of sedentary lifestyles, uh, the type of food that we eat, and, and, and of course there are genetic predispositions that bring about weight, which can be controlled by what we do and what we eat. So one relevant thing in our current situation is that obesity worsens the, worsens the outcomes for COVID-19 and uh, having obesity increases the risk, the risk of someone get to getting uh, severe illness from COVID-19. And therefore it's important for us to, as much as possible, keep fit and keep safe uh, because uh, COVID, the best way of preventing COVID is not catching uh, the disease. And if you catch the disease, then seek uh, medical advice as soon as possible. So um, I'll go straight and talk about the practical tips to healthy eating. Um, one thing that I want to mention here is that uh, uh, most of the Adventists or most of people are now conscious about what they eat. The question comes in is how to maintain and sustain a healthy uh, dietary patterns. So here we talk about healthy dietary patterns because it's a combination of, of, of what we eat, uh, how frequently we eat, how much we eat and, 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 uh, and sustaining the good dietary practices that I'm going to mention in, in a short while. So the first thing that we need to do is eat lots of fruits and vegetables. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, even the Bible told us about uh, plant food. This is information that I know everybody knows. Uh, everybody, many people know this information. Um, and, the, and the guidance is to eat at least five portions of a variety of fruits and vegetables every day. So here we're talking about fruits and vegetables. The good thing is that we are a country where we have fresh fruits. It's not like other countries where people import food, fruits or they have uh, canned fruits or dried fruits. We can get uh, fresh fruits. So what are the benefits uh, of, of, of these vegetables and fruits? Of course, they lower blood pressure and, the, and, the, and the, the, the mechanisms are broad. So for purposes of making this presentation as, as, as uh, easily understandable to everyone, uh, I think it's good for us to take it as, 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 uh, uh, as simply as that. I don't want to go into the science behind it. Reduce the risk of heart disease and stroke, prevents types of cancers. Um, uh, I'm going to elaborate that in a short while. Then the, the lower uh, risk of eye and digestive problems, then have a positive effect upon blood sugar and can help to keep uh, the appetite in check. So when we are talking about check, uh, keeping appetite in check, that is why the recommendation is most of the time is that you're having a fruit salad. Uh, you, the question that many people ask is at what point should I eat the fruit salad when I'm eating? The, the, the most suitable point is at the beginning of your diet. If you're having a five course meal, start with the fruits, then they fill up the space and therefore reduces the amount of food that you're going to take. And, and so different colors and, 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 uh, and types of, of fruits and vegetables have different 
nutrients and phytochemicals. Phytochemicals are compounds that are uh, uh, bioactive in plants that uh, help in, in maintaining good health. So the, the broader the variety and the spectrum of, of, of fruits and vegetables that we eat, the, the, the better the outcome in terms of uh, uh, wellness. So let me say something about uh, plant foods. Again, uh, this, is, this is a repetition, but just to, 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 to strengthen what I'm talking about, uh, eat at least five portions and eat mostly foods of plant origin. Very important. And, 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 and uh, limit the refined starchy foods. So when you're talking about the refined starchy food, very basic is uh, unga ugali. Uh, instead of buying the, the, uh, the packaged uh, uh, high quality flour, use the milled flour. Let me say something about this flour, um, the packaged flour. The reason as to why the flour, packaged flour is, is packaged like that is to lengthen the shelf life. So the business persons do not have the interest of, of the individual at heart. All they want to do is to try as much as possible to reduce losses at the shelves of the supermarkets. Um, so they remove important nutrients, uh, uh, micronutrients, fiber, oils, and, and phytochemicals that are in the, plant, in, the, in, the, in the various grains that if they are not kept, if they're not removed, it reduces the, sh the shelf life of the flour. So it's important for us to try as much as possible to use the milled or whole milled grain uh, products. So here, once again, I'll talk about some chemical compounds that are found in plants, antioxidants and anti-carcinogenic anti phytochemicals. I'll take a little moment and just describe what antioxidants are. Now, a normal human body produces uh, compounds that are called free radicals. Now, these free radicals are compounds that are produced as the body metabolizes uh, and processes different uh, uh, nutrients and, and chemicals in the body. So the free radicals increase in the body because uh, as people age, their cells function kind of reduces. And the reduction in the normal functionality of the cells makes the body to produce more free radicals. Let me illustrate this in a very clear, a simple way. If you look at someone who drinks a lot of alcohol and smokes, and you look at the skin, you might place this person's age at a higher level. Maybe someone is 20, someone looks like he's 40. It's because the free radicals damage the cells. And this is basically the process that happens internally in the body and leads to uh, 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 development of cancer, for example. So when we eat the plants, we eat the fruits and vegetables, what we are trying to do, we are creating a buffer, a protection against the free radicals. So the more the fruits you eat, the more the free radicals are destroyed by the foods that we eat. So basically what you are doing, you're building a defense system in your body by eating the fruits and vegetables. I illustrate just a couple of, 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 of uh, uh, foods that we commonly use and, and uh, what phytochemicals they are. I don't want you to focus on the phytochemicals. The focus here is really broad. Uh, the phytochemicals are, which we cannot be able to finish we start this discussion. So you see the orange, the, the, the yellow, purple, the, the red. Basically what we are saying is that all these compounds, uh, all these foods produce a lot of compounds that are beneficial for our, for our well-being. So um, this is once again an, a, a repetition, but very important. Uh, uh, Phytoesterols phyto, phyto are also uh, compounds that are also found in fruits and vegetables. Um, they are found in uh, vegetables, nuts, seeds, onions, apples, black tea. Uh, tannins are also present in red wines, tea, uh, uh, which also contributes to the color that there is in, in, in different types of tea. We also now even have purple tea, which means it has more uh, phyto, phytoestrogens and, and, and uh, phytosterols, which also help in countering the free radicals that I just mentioned. Let me just say something about red wines here. When I'm talking about red wine, it doesn't have to be alcoholic because we have non-alcoholic wine. And, and, and of course, we, we, we know the, the, I'll mention about the uh, deleterious effects of alcohol. So um, once again, the plant foods, uh, 
are, are, are very protective and, and the different types of vegetables, uh, including the garlic and the onions of uh, uh, phytochemicals that are, are, are known to, to reduce the risk to colorectal cancer and different other types of cancers. So the second guidance is based your meals on whole grain, all whole grain carb carbohydrates. And the guidance is that one quarter of your plate should have uh, should be composed of starchy food, basically trying as much as possible to have whole grain carbohydrates. And why are we talking about whole grain carbohydrates? Let me just explain this a bit scientifically for us to try and understand this. When someone eats uh, food that has fiber, whole grain, it has an important role, various functions in the body. First of all, it aids in the, the digestion process and therefore it reduces the risk of, 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 of cancers. And fiber is, and how it works in reducing the risk for cancer is that uh, fiber is not digested. It is actually fermented in the, in the large intestines. So the fermentation process produces some compounds that help in the regeneration of the cells of the intestines, the whole intestinal, uh, the whole gut. So by doing that, those compounds, if those compounds help in the regeneration of the, of, of the intestines, the intestines are likely to remain healthy. The second component about uh, uh, the fiber that there is in, in carbohydrates is that when you eat carbohydrates, it binds uh, bile. Bile is a compound that is produced for digestion of fats. So when it binds the bile, it means that the bile needs, the body has to produce more bile. Bile is made by uh, cholesterol. So if your body has a cholesterol st store, what by eating fiber, you are, you are uh, depleting the, 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 the uh, bile and by reducing the bile in the body, you are also making the body to make, uh, 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 I mean, the body, you, you are making the body to, to, to produce more bile. By, then the body produces the bile by withdrawing cholesterol from your body. So you kind of have a negative cholesterol balance by eating uh, wholemeal grains that have uh, a fiber and then making your body healthier and, uh, and maintaining the intestinal health of, of your body. So this is basically an important reason as to why we keep on talking about uh, using whole grain because of the fiber and the phytochemicals that they are. So there is the, fi there is the fiber, there are the phytochemicals, there is the, the, the roughage that is used in the digestion process that all these add up to maintaining good health, good gut health. So this is basically what I've talked about. And, uh, and, and so when we talk about uh, uh, fiber helps to lower cholesterol, I've explained that. Fiber helps to prevent formation of blood clots. Um, basically by reducing the, the cholesterol in the body, it reduces all those negative effects that come with uh, excessive cholesterol in the body. Then of course the phytoestrol, uh, phytoestrogens, which are also phytic compounds that are available in, in, the, in the whole grains, help in maintaining the body and reducing uh, the risk to cancer. Uh, the, the whole grains also have magnesium, selenium, copper, and zinc that are important in building the body's immunity and protecting against some cancers. The third guidance is, is eat more fish. Now, one thing is that fish is expensive, but uh, you know, the, the question that people need to ask is, is, is between uh, uh, medication and fish, what is, what is, what is, what is uh, cheaper? Uh, so basically fish has omega-3 fats uh, and, and other compounds, including micronutrients, minerals that are important for maintaining the body uh, safe. Let's try as much as possible to avoid canned and smoked fish because this, as I'm going to explain a little bit later on, might contain carcinogenic compounds or compounds that uh, increase the chances of getting cancer. So as much as possible, the guidance is limit red meat and avoid processed meat. Processed meat includes things like sausage. Uh, but what we say is that uh, don't deny yourself so much, limit the amount of processed meat that we eat or even avoid it because if you can't eat sausage, I mean, you are not going to lose anything much. Then uh, meat also contains uh, uh, the different types of nutrients. We have proteins, iron, zinc, and vitamin B12. And B12 is, is mostly available in animal food. So the guidance here is you eat fish or eat white meat as much as possible. 
So what about the smoked and grilled meats, the nyamachomas and all those things? Uh, uh, important for us to note that smoked meats uh, produce uh, carcinogenic compounds. I, 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 I struck out uh, the scientific terms there for us to, to, to keep, keep on course so that we don't get com confused. But it's important for us to note that these are compounds that are produced by smoking or, 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 or meat that is processed by smoking. So milk, when meat is smoked and then it is salted, it also produces another set of compounds. So this is a very common thing. You go to the machoma, they, they, they are smoking it. I mean, they are, they are burning it under direct uh, heat and then they salt it and that produces the uh, carcinogenic compounds that uh, end up uh, uh, increasing the risk of, of, of different types of cancers, especially cancer of the colon uh, and, and different types of cancers that affect the intestinal uh, system. Um, then uh, pros, uh, on pres pres preservation, processing, and, and preparation, limit consumption of salt and avoid moldy cereals as much as possible. And, and as, as I talk about uh, salts and, and moldy cereals, let me say this, that uh, uh, it has been known that the chances of people getting uh, uh, aflatoxin uh, poisoning through milk from animals that have been fed with moldy food has been documented. So much as we say, uh, you don't know what the farmer fed that animal with, uh, chances are that you might be imbibing aflatoxin compounds that end up causing cancers later on in life. And then people start asking, where did this problem come from? I was a vegetarian, I was, I was, I was feeding my cow. With, 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 the, with the plant food, but you feeding the cow with moldy food increases chances of consuming aflatoxin through the milk. So let's be cautious about this. So cut down on saturated fats and sugar. Uh, this is common, uh, I mean, commonly known. Uh, saturated fats are fats uh, uh, like, for example, those that majorly coming from, from uh, animal sources. And, and, uh, and, 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 and the important thing for us to note is that the saturated fats increase the chances of getting uh, cardiovascular uh, diseases. They are available in things like cheese, cakes, biscuits, uh, sausages, creams, butters, and pies. Um, so important for us to note is choose foods that contain unsaturated fats instead of, uh, instead use vegetables, vegetable oil, uh, use uh, fruits like avocados and uh, oily fish as much as possible. So when choosing the, your, your oil for cooking, use uh, vegetable-based oils. And even when you're choosing the vegetable-based oils, at times you might buy vegetable oil, but once you get home, it, it kind of solidifies. That means that that uh, uh, vegetable oil was hydrogenated for purposes of preservation. And it might have the same effect as saturated fat. So I know most of you have noted this, so it's important for you to note that some of those, once you hydrogenate oils, you, increase, you actually make them saturated and therefore having a negative effect, just like using the, the saturated fats. So um, same thing, but now adding on to sugar. Um, now sugar is, is a big thing. Uh, and, and let me say this, that sugar, people get addicted to sugar. And that is why people in industry use children, they hold the children when they are young with, with sugars, you see uh, juices that are small containers that mothers opt to give their children to go to school with, not knowing that they're actually creating uh, sugar uh, addicts. And it has also been documented that people that are sh have sugar addiction right from childhood have high chances of becoming alcoholics when they become uh, grown up. So it's important for us to, to ensure that this is, is, a stress, uh, is, is, is avoided as much as possible. So cut down uh, the sugary and, and alcoholic drinks uh, uh, as much as possible to maintain good health. So I've talked about salt uh, earlier on, but uh, the recommendation is that we shouldn't eat more than six grams of salt per day. But also note that there are foods that we buy that actually have salt because they use salt for preservation. Um, and, and the practical way of going about this is use salt as much as possible during cooking and remove salt from the table. Keep those uh, salt shakers away from the table. 
that reduces the amount of salt that someone eats. And, and, and this is a, a, a process that, that comes through conditioning. So there are people who actually don't actually test the food. They ask for salt even before they test the food. So the, 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 the advice here is a st one step at a time, start reducing the amount of salt that there is in food and as much as possible, remove the salt from the table because salt has been associated with hypertension and hypertension increases the chance of get someone getting diabetes uh, later on. The next guidance is on physical activity and uh, for, that helps to keep uh, healthy weight. Now, physical activity is a, is a, is a, is a chapter of, it, of its own, but what uh, we know now is that the Boda Boda industry has contributed greatly to people's uh, sedentary lifestyles. Someone is going somewhere that is about a kilometer away, they take a Boda Boda, even when the environment is safe to walk. So what are the immediate benefits of uh, being physically fit? You, you improve the quality of sleep, you reduce anxiety, and you also uh, reduces chances of uh, blood pressure. Uh, in the long term, uh, it maintains brain health, uh, heart health, it prevents cancer, uh, helps in, in, in health, maintaining a healthy weight, and then uh, strengthens the bone and also helps in balance and coordination. These are just a few to mention, and I don't want to go into the science behind all these aspects. But let me say this, that the moment you engage in a physical activity, some compounds are generated in the body that affect the whole organism, it affects the whole of your body, right from mood. Because the moment you engage in physical activ activity, some hormones are generated, endo end endorphins, and these endorphins help someone to have a good feeling. So you, you get people are very irritable, when they talk a kazi, they are very irritable. Uh, if, if someone will just take a walk from work, keep it a bit uh, uh, fast, you will get home and feel much better than it was before. And another thing is physical activity is not a one size fits all. For people that have pre-existing conditions, the recommendation is first of all, check with your physician whether it is safe to engage in physical activity. Next thing that we need to note about physical activity is that it is a slow process, start slow and increase the intensity. There are various aspects about intensity. There's what we call the uh, intensity of, of, of the exercise and the frequency. And, and so if you have not been engaged in physical activity, start slow, introduce your body into the physical activity because physical activity is actually a stressor to the body. You start by running 100 meters, like you are, you, are, you are taking a sprint 100 meters, the following day you'll not be able to wake up. That makes you not to engage in physical activity the following day and that is it. So start slow, make it uh, uh, enjoyable, uh, play your music on your headphones. If it's, it's not possible, go to an environment that you enjoy doing, but make it enjoyable. Start slow, increase the intensity, introduce your body into the stressing situation slowly. Then the physical activity can be sustained. Um, so the recommendation is uh, try to be as active as possible, uh, be moderately, moderately physically active, uh, Brisk walking is, is, is a very simple thing. You don't have to run for you to get benefits of physical activity. You can actually walk and the benefits, you will get the benefits. It's only that it will take longer. So you, moderate, low to moderate physical activity is good for the body. Start slowly and introduce the physical activity over time. Then as, as, as the body gets used to it, you can increase to the, the duration of time and the intensity. Yeah, so if you are walking slowly, you can increase the pace. You can time yourself walking a distance of two kilometers. Now, yesterday I walked uh, for uh, 10 minutes. Tomorrow I'm going to walk for nine minutes. Increase the, increase the, 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 the I mean, reduce the time within your coverage and that makes you increase the intensity of the physical activity. The question that usually people ask is what physical activity, how do I measure that physical activity is beneficial to me? The moment you engage in physical activity that increases your heartbeat, it means that that physical activity is likely to have cardiovascular fitness and benefits to your body. And as I said, right from the beginning, for people that are overweight, start slowly as usual uh, and, and, and make sure that you don't have any other pre-existing condition that can hurt you. For people that have diabetes, make sure that uh, the shoes that you're wearing are safe so that you don't cause 
source on the fruit that might uh, 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 initiate, I mean, precipitate other uh, uh, more damaging uh, uh, effects on the body. So look at your circumstances and ensure that it's a safe environment where you're taking physical activity from. The next one is drink water. And the recommendation is six to eight glasses per day. Um, and the question is, uh, a glass can be as big as, 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 as a big tumbler. Uh, the recommendation is about 250 milliliters. And there's a big difference when you are taking water. If I take six to eight glasses of water, you say, uh, I'm too busy today. I'll just take my six to eight glasses in the morning. You will take all that water to the toilet through urination. The recommendation is you take it slowly. When you take it slowly, it is slowly absorbed into the body and it's much more beneficial to you at the end of the day. And once again, avoid an, uh, I mean, using an alcoholic drinks. And, and the, the, the hint here is for people who don't have a natural liking for drinking water, uh, make your water have some flavor, do some lemon or, or, or fruit into it. And that makes it uh, have a different flavor and makes it easy for you to enjoy uh, drinking water. Then the next recommendation is don't skip breakfast. Why it's recommended that you don't skip breakfast is when you eat breakfast, you reduce chances of snacking throughout the day. And what snacks will someone catch? Someone will catch a biscuit. That biscuit has carbohydrates. It has saturated fats. And so you're adding up to the uh, food that you want to avoid. So that is why it's recommended that you have a heavy breakfast. You have a heavy breakfast, you avoid snacking throughout the day, and then it introduces your body into uh, uh, energy that is a balance that you can use throughout the day. Then as much as possible, use the whole grains and low, lower sugar cereals, uh, uh, probably adding some fruits, a little protein into your, into your breakfast meal uh, to, to have it a balanced meal. Um, so what portion sizes are we looking at? Uh, very basically, this is what you're talking about. Uh, nearly a quarter of your plate should have uh, whole grains. Then we have healthy, healthy proteins and healthy proteins range from uh, fish, beans, uh, uh, white meat, but as much as possible, avoid the, the meats that have uh, saturated fats. So we're looking at bacon, we're looking at uh, uh, the, the fatty cuts of meat. Fruits as much as possible, plenty where possible. And then vegetables should also add to our, 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 our plates and then use the healthy oils. And of course, water is important throughout the day. So let me say something about the detox uh, that uh, everybody is talking about. And, and it's, it's very common. Uh, it was more common in the, in, in the early, mid-20s. Uh, mid between 20, 2010, 2018. Um, but the, 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 the recommendation is for as long as your body has kidneys, it has a liver, it has skin and lungs, you don't have to do anything to detox. Those organs will detox. So those detox things are basically marketing tools and people have made a lot of money out of them. For as long as you eat well, you keep safe, and you ensure that your organ systems are functioning well, you don't have to use detox. Yeah. Uh, so I think it's important for us to, uh, to note this. For those people who have tried using detox, uh, we have so many cases of people who did not benefit completely. They lost weight uh, for a short while, and then they went back to the original weight or even gained much more weight. So in conclusion, um, eat fruits daily eat fresh vegetables, as much as possible use whole grains and nuts in your meal, then use white meat or fish, uh, use fruits for your snacks, use fruits and nuts for your snacks, uh, have water and avoid fizzy drinks and carbonated drinks as much as possible for your health. And of course, keep yourself fit, keep moving, sleep, have relaxation uh, and, 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 and you'll keep safe. I know there are many things that I, I, I would have talked about, but because of the limitation of time, I want to stop at this point and then I am open for questions and discussions. Thank you very much. Back to you, Wesley. Willie, sorry.
Thank you so much, Banamukaya, uh, uh, for that wonderful presentation and insight that you have given us. Uh, allow me to ask members if they have any questions uh, so that you, or any comments so that uh, Dr. Rigia is able to answer. So anybody with any questions or any concerns? Probably your experience with non-communicable disease, probably that you're having or any questions that you have concerning this presentation, just uh, type it there, we'll be able to read it. And then you can as well also raise up your hand so that we are able to, you are able to unmute and ask. Let's interact. Any questions? <clears throat> so lack of questions means understood. Uh, Stanley, do we have any questions on our YouTube platform? I don't see any questions there. So uh, we can see here uh, a question from one of us. This is uh, Elder Kerama is asking, and he's saying that, thank you, Moses, for the presentation. Kindly give a comment with regards to intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting. Maybe you can give a comment on that. Yes, yes. Thank you very much. Um, now, there are many things that I said I wasn't able to talk about because of the limitation of time. Uh, there are different uh, dietary approaches that are being used to uh, uh, keep health. Now, intermittent fasting is one among us different types of dietary approaches. And uh, our, the evidence that there is at the moment is intermittent fasting, depending on, on, uh, on, on, on the frequency of fasting and the duration of fasting has benefits to the body. And, uh, and, and, and therefore the general recommendation for intermittent fasting is you can fast, but for people that have uh, pre-existing condition like diabetes, it's good to do it under the guidance of, of a clinician or a nutritionist so as to avoid uh, a hypoglycemia. But generally intermittent fasting, depending on the frequency of fasting, I mean, the duration of fasting is beneficial to the body. Even the Bible talks about times when uh, uh, different people in the Bible fasted and prayed. That process of fasting and praise, praying had, has benefit to it. For the Muslim, for our Muslim brothers and sisters, uh, it is part of, 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 their, of their life. So that is some form of intermittent fasting where you have a period of time where you don't eat, then you eat later on. And it has been shown in some studies that it actually helps to reduce hypertension. It helps to reduce, I mean, to reduce weight and sustain weight. It helps to reduce uh, uh, cholesterol in the blood and therefore intermittent fasting is generally uh, 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 advisable, but uh, for people that have existing conditions, as I said, you need to do it under guidance so that you don't get hypoglycemic or you don't uh, aggravate an existing condition. Thank you so much for that comment. Uh, there's a question from Achien Owino, and she's saying that thanks so much, Mr. Mokai, for the presentation. Is organ meat also regarded as red meat? Is organ meat also regarded as red meat? Now, organ meat is, 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 is actually red meat. And uh, the, the basic thing to think about organ meat is because most of the organ meat comes from uh, uh, organs that actually preserve uh, uh, the body. And therefore, there is a possibility of accumulation of saturated fats in some of the organs. Yeah. So I think the recommendation is organ meats, uh, looking at it, you, 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 you look at it from the point of saturated fats. Uh, and therefore, as much as possible, um, it can be used. 
but it depends on the on the on the, on the type of organ. If you are using those that have a lot of fat, try as much as possible to reduce the fat. But the offals, uh, uh, like for example, um, the intestines of 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 of, uh, of goats and such animals, at times they are they are they are considered as, as safer as compared to the red meats that have uh, thick saturated fats. Thank you for that comment. Uh, Brother Kefa is saying, hi, Dr. Tari. What are the perils? What are the perils of uh, regularly drinking tea? What are the perils of regularly drinking tea? <laughs> now, <clears throat> it depends on where you're coming from. Uh, I know from LNG White's uh, teaching, anything that uh, can uh, uh, cause uh, stimulation is, is not good. But just like I mentioned earlier on, uh, now the evidence that is coming through studies on different types of foods is that tea has uh, the, the, the phytochemicals that I talked about that at times are beneficial to the body in countering the free radicals. Um, the only question that we need to ask ourselves in what form are we taking the tea? Because most of the time the tea is going to be taken with milk uh, and milk is probably whole meal milk, and that milk then brings in the component of saturated, excessive intake of saturated uh, uh, fat, which has a negative effect. Then the other thing, just like I mentioned, the safety of the milk is another component to think about. But there's uh, the other thing that you also not need to think about is that uh, there is a recent study that showed that taking hot tea is associated with uh, cancer, and and it's because of the hot hotness of the tea that it, it causes uh, throat cancer. Uh, that study was specifically looking at throat cancer and it was actually a Kenyan study. So uh, when taking tea, make it cold uh, as much as possible, reduce the amount of fat or use uh, half, half fat milk if there is, or, or remove the fats once you have boiled your milk to try and reduce the amount of saturated fats that you're taking in. But generally, my uh, experience and from science, uh, tea, per se, has, is, it doesn't have a negative effect in, in increasing the chances of getting diabetes. If you take tea, just like a concentrated, uh, like uh, strong tea, it has, it has the, 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 uh, the, the phytic compounds that I talked about that are beneficial uh, for the body in, 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 as, as an antioxidant. But once again, I usually say this, is that the best source of antioxidants that you can get? Definitely no, you can get that from fruits and vegetables. Yeah. Thank you for that comment. And if any of you is not satisfied, you can always bring in a follow-up question. But thank you so much for those comments, uh, Dr. Safa. There is uh, there's another concern here. There is, there is this herbal drink that is used by traditional healers to clean the stomach before a meal, eh? especially among the pastoralist communities. Does this really make sense? What is the effect of this practice? Are there any dangers? So we are talking about alternative medicine here in the context of nutrition. Yes, <clears throat> I have two comments to make about this. First of all, uh, there's no way we can be able to establish the, the contents of, of the compounds that are sold by our, our people from um, the pastoralist communities. And, and therefore, I think the important thing to, 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 to be is even, even uh, in, in, in normal uh, buyer, buyer and, and, and the business person uh, relationship, the recommendation is the buyer should, must be aware. So most of these compounds, we don't know how they are made. And let me give you an example. Uh, some of these compounds have been used by uh, the, uh, uh, some scrapless businessmen. They use diabetic drugs as a mixture into that mixture. So they tell you, if you take this, you are going to reduce your blood sugar. And for sure, because they put in diabetes drugs, your blood sugar might come down. Then you believe in that compound. But then the proportion of, 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 the, of, the, of the drugs may not be safe enough to sustain the diabetes uh, control for a long period of time. So there are so many things that have been uh, discussed about that. Um, traditionally, those medications were made in a way from herbs, from compounds that were known over a period of time to be safe. But for now, there's no way you can be able to say that they are safe. 
because they are not standardized. We don't know what they are made out of, where they are made, what is the mixture. So it's safer not to drink things that we don't know. We want to thank you so much, uh, um, Mr. Mokaya, for the presentation that you have made. This has been so enlightening. And as a church, we appreciate. And as also members who are joining us, we have seen many members who are probably not members of our church. Uh, we really appreciate that you could be able to spare your time to give us such a very wonderful presentation uh, okay. uh, with very great insight so that we can be able to live, uh, we can be able to live longer. Mm -hmm.